You're a great friend. Even if we don't always understand you. Haha! -ha! That's where I come in! Hello everyone, and welcome to Character Dive, the show where I severely overthink cartoon characters both simple and complex. Today we're going to talk about Ponyville's number one goofball and the element of laughter itself, Pinkie Pie. At some point I'll work my way through the entire main six, but for now, let's get silly with a filly named Billy from Philly. Delphia. C cut that. Cut. Cut. <laughs> Pinkie Pie is the embodiment of the Looney Tunes style of zany tune humor, but eh, minus the violence. Duck season, fire! Pinkie Pie is probably the most expressive out of the My Little Pony cast because of this. She can do things like breaking the fourth wall, she can pop up at random from anywhere including the tops and sides of your screen, float temporarily despite not being able to fly, keep up with the likes of Rainbow Dash, one of the fastest ponies in existence, well, I say one of the fastest ponies because hardcore pony fans have debated over her speed for quite some time and I don't want the purists raging at me in the comments over it. I mean, I'm just trying to have fun here, but whatever. Anytime Pinkie Pie pulls off a feat that's impossible or she completely outperforms a pony in their area of expertise, it's because of her zaniness. Tune force, tune factor, tune mimicry, tune physics, whatever you want to call it, that's what Pinkie Pie has, and few are equipped to deal with it. Trying to, uh, avoid a... Deadpool comparison since, well, you know, you get the idea. Pinkie Pie is an extremely happy, bouncy, and energetic pony, and you just can't help getting excited when you see her. Being silly and wacky is a core part of Pinkie's personality. It's who she is, it's why she's the life of the party, and the element of laughter. Pinkie loves to laugh, and more than that, she loves to make others laugh. In some cases, she's even lifted the spirits of the entire town of Ponyville all at once. In a sense, she's depression's ultimate enemy because she will work her pink poofy tail off to put a smile on the face of anyone that's having a bad day. Sometimes this can be a bad thing, though. Her dedication to helping people has on occasion annoyed others greatly. Cranky Doodle Donkey is a good example of this. Pinky wanted to be his friend so bad that she drove this poor old donkey nearly insane between constantly bugging him despite him wanting to be left alone, ruining his cherished scrapbook, albeit an accident, uh, all this just to get a smile out of him. Luckily it worked out in the end, but the point to take away from this here is that Pinkie Pie can be a bit obsessive at times. An early example being when she chased Rainbow Dash across Ponyville at high speeds just because she thought she was avoiding her, and before that she was tailing the rest of her friends like criminals for the same reason. Pinkie Pie is like this mostly because friendship is the most important thing to her. She values her friends so deeply that the thought of losing them is too much for her to bear. Taking it a step further, she went into a sort of depression when she thought her friends didn't like her anymore. Pinkie Pie can be a little insecure and paranoid at times. Most apparent in the same episode, Party of One. Also, while depressed, Pinkie Pie's zany nature shifts to a sort of psychopathic one, where she began talking to herself through inanimate objects that she used to replace her friends. All this over one big assumption. It's pretty wild. I mean, this is the image that inspired the Pinkamina creepy poster, after all. At the end of the day, just like how Pinkie Pie has extreme highs, she also has extreme lows, possibly the lowest lows of the main six. It's because she's the element of laughter that her sadness is so apparent. The brighter the picture, the darker the negative. You get the idea. Points to the first person that can tell me where I got that quote from. Hint, it's a DC cartoon. Now, before you start to think that I'm aiming to pull a game theory and paint this cute and lovable character as Satan's spawn, relax. That's not where this is going. Her flaws are a good thing because it shows that despite being one of the most positive characters in the show, she isn't completely unfazable, just like how Fluttershy isn't completely spineless. Think of your closest and most supportive friend, the one that always picks you up when you're down. As strong as they are, they have their bad days too, whether you see them or not. That is Pinkie Pie. The second benefit to her flaws is that, obviously, it keeps her from being too one-dimensional. If she was always happy, never sad, never angry, never down, she'd be a flat and possibly less interesting character. Character flaws are good when used correctly. End of point. <laughs> Moving on, Pinkie Pie is the master of parties. She can throw together a shindig in a matter of hours, and she has this knack of gathering large amounts of people together. It also helps that she knows everybody in Ponyville, and I mean everybody, 
her memory is top tier. And of course, her cutie mark is three party balloons, and I swear to Christ, if somebody makes a tramp stamp joke, I'm gonna scream my head off. That joke is old and dead. Another interesting thing about Pinkie Pie is her uncategorizable special power, the Pinkie Sense. Being an Earth Pony, Pinkie Pie doesn't use active magic. The only magic available to her is passive magic. Yes, both of those are actual confirmed concepts in the MLP universe that really deserve their own video, so I won't go into depth in it right now. Either way, her pinky sense isn't passive or active magic. It's just something that Pinkie Pie sort of has. The pinky sense is quite literally the Pinkie Pie version of Spidey Sense. Look, I know that's obvious, but stick with me on this. This sense of hers, typically displayed by one or all of Pinkie Pie's body parts spazzing out wildly in different ways, gives her warnings about danger seconds before it happens. Anything from falling objects to big disasters. Even though this ability isn't seen much in the series, I think it could give Twilight's magic a run for its money solely because she can't figure out how it works. And it's meant to make something specific that you choose to happen happen. With you, a it makes no sense at all! That's so not true, Twilight. Sometimes it's a bunch of random things happening in my body at random times that supposedly predict the future. In battle, the first step to victory is understanding your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. At least that's how it works in anime. Now, one downside to being Pinkie Pie is that, much like being a comedian or the funny guy, People tend to not take you seriously, and this is something that Pinkie Pie deals with quite a bit. To be completely fair, there are many times where Pinkie Pie completely misses the plot of the situation. Alright ladies, let's show them what friendship can do! Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> Still, there are times like when the Parasprites were devouring Ponyville, and she was the only one that knew how to get rid of them. But all of her friends dismissed her as just being Pinkie Pie and ignored her. Granted, this is more of a communication error on both sides, but still, Pinkie Pie has good things to contribute, but due to her silly nature and randomness, she's often put in the Boy Who Cried Wolf camp, or Pony Who Cried Wolf, I guess. Usually put in that camp by her best friends of all people, er, ponies. <laughs> still, she never holds a grudge and is always willing to help. Even though she tends to drive them crazy at times, her friends do cherish her. She keeps her spirits high and disperses their fears with the simple act of laughing. She may get a little obsessed and annoying at times in her pursuit of joy and smiles, but she only gets this way because she cares so much. She's the element of laughter, and I can't think of a single pony that's better for the role. Thanks for watching this super wordy and grossly overthought video about a cute and pink cartoon pony. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe, dude! Or do that, I got more coming, both pony related and non pony related. People seem to be liking these character focused videos, and I'm having fun making them, so it's a win win. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and if you're a pony fan, tell me which of the main six should I cover next? I'm doing the main six first, and after that, I'll be doing any character from the MLP universe, both evil or good, based off of viewer vote or personal interest, so that should be fun. That being said, if you're looking for more character dive videos, check out the ones I did on Ginny and her mother from My Life as a Teenage Robot, or the one I did on Robot Boy, um, if that video went up before this one. If not, uh, spoiler alert? <laughs> oh god. Regardless, those are pretty good videos, just saying. In the meantime, I'm your inappropriate host cap of the Navoid, and this has been Character Dive. Uh, thank you. I say thank you. <laughs>